Hey everybody, and welcome to the Design Biz Crash Course webinar. A little bit different than a podcast, it's a webinar, a little bit more structured, and all that means is we actually have notes that we're working off of today. We spend some time planning this stuff out. People are trickling in, it's like a conference, not everybody's at their seats yet, everybody's unwrapping their Snickers bars and pouring their coffees, so we'll, we'll wait for everybody to get ready. In the meantime, if you are here uh, right away, straight away, you're on time, use the hashtag Matt report. I'm going to be monitoring that over here on this screen. You can ask us questions because without questions, we cannot learn, right? That's how I've learned. I ask a thousand and one questions about everything. So send us your design business questions. Uh, hashtag Matt report. There is a special for today's listeners and audience uh, viewers, uh, and that's Shay's going to be offering up a bit of a discount, a little bit of a discount on her upcoming course, the Design Biz Crash Course. Uh, so stay tuned. We're going to be letting you know what that's all about. What is this podcast all about? This is the Matt Report Podcast. This is the WordPress Digital Business Podcast. Uh, we talk to folks who are running businesses, either using WordPress as the foundation of their business, or they're folks like Shay and I and some of you in the audience who are building digital products for WordPress or services for WordPress. Uh, and we love WordPress and we use it at the core. Uh, best way to stay connected if you are a new viewer, and I know many of you are, uh, it's mattreport.com slash subscribe to join the mailing list. Stay connected that way. It's the number one way uh, to stay connected. What else do we have today? This episode is brought to you by my product, Conductor Plugin. It's the fastest way to build unique content displays on WordPress without touching any lines of code, and now it supports uh, Genesis, uh, which is hugely popular, widely popular, um, so we're proud of that. And you can save 20% today, conductorplugin.com, use, use the coupon code MattReport20. Other news, our good friend, I know Shay and I, mutual friend, Carrie Dills, is relaunching her podcast from Genesis Office Hours to Office Hours, and she's running a superb promotion uh, at officehours.fm, where you can win a $200 license to Conductor, one lucky winner. I'm only giving away one, it's all I can afford. But there's a host of other products that are involved in this giveaway, so definitely check that out, officehours.fm. She's really focusing on the business side of WordPress, much like myself. Speaking of, iTunes reviews. If I get enough reviews, I can beat out Carrie. Carrie is a very tough competitor, right? There's only so much listening time Carrie and I have that we, can, that we can afford to give away. If I can just beat her out in iTunes, I won't tell anybody. Just leave a five-star review at Matt Report. Just go to iTunes, search Matt Report, and I'd really appreciate it. And I'd also really appreciate it if you give Carrie uh, a five-star review too because she works her tail off. Now we're going to get into the meat and potatoes of the show. Shea Box, welcome to the program. Thank you, Matt. Thank you for having me. It's quite an honor, honor to be here with you. <laughs> I'm super excited uh, for this because... Number one, this is like one of a very select few of these promotional shows that I've done before um, because I think you have a kick-ass product. I don't really know any other way to, <laughs> to put it. Um, and there's huge amounts of uh, quality um, and expertise that you put into your products, and that's why I'm excited, and that's why I am happy to bring you onto the show. Let folks know who you are and what you do uh, in this word, in this competitive word WordPress world. All right. Well, I call myself a WordPress consultant. Um, that's because I do a little bit of digital strategy, some design and development, mostly design. Um, and I, you can find me over at shabox.com, and I work with a lot of creative bloggers, uh, mostly food bloggers. Um, and so I've found a lot of success in that niche. And um, a lot of people actually know me for my uh, pre-made Genesis child theme, which is called Foodie Pro. And um, that is sold at my website and over at Studio Press. And it's been awesome to watch how the food blogging community has really been able to use that. Um, that's one of the things we're going to talk about as we sort of go through this. And uh, I said we had structured show notes, but throw that out right out the window because I forgot to pre preface the fact that you have a five-day course that you're about to launch. It actually launch, launches tomorrow, right? Tomorrow. Yes. Uh, but folks who are listening today will be able to get early access to it if they just keep on listening. Uh, April Fool's probably not the best day. I didn't even think about that, to be <laughs> honest with you. <laughs> like, ha, gotcha. <laughs> 
probably not the best day. Surprise, I'm, I'm switching to Drupal. Um, <laughs> so that launches tomorrow. It's a five-day course, and what we're going to talk about today is pull out three pieces, uh, three days uh, of that course. We're going to kind of dissect and unpack those different areas of your course. Um, but before we get to that, there's a lot of folks. I talk to a lot of folks, me, myself, personally, are you know always working on sort of the uh, the packaged product, like an ebook, a consultation. I have a private forum at Matt Report. There are folks who want to learn how to build digital products like this, and you're in an, an awesome in an awesome position to for doing client services. You actually have a digital product that sells, like the foodie theme. Now you're going into education. This is your second run at it. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about the pros and cons and sort of what you've learned so far going into this second, uh, this second phase of building an educational product. Right. Well, I think, what's, I think the most important factor is that that client work has set me up with an audience to be able to sell these products, um, like my foodie theme and the two courses that I'm doing, or have done. Um, my first course was called Garnish, and it was actually for creative bloggers who wanted to DIY their own website. And it gives them kind of like the inside scoop on how to hash out their branding and handle some design and some light development. Um, and that did really well. However, I felt like the format that I did that in wasn't authentic to who I was. And so it was kind of a struggle for me because while I really wanted to get that information out there to people and I re really enjoyed working with the bloggers that I did, it, was, it just didn't feel authentic. And it, I was trying to follow a, a launch plan that somebody else laid out, and I felt like I needed to follow that in order to have any success with it. And so when I decided that it was time for another course um, to help other freelancers who want to get their business off the ground, I wanted to make sure that I did it in a really authentic way. So I'm not following any launch plan. There's, um, there's no videos going on, you know, some high, high quality videos or anything like that. Like I wanted to do it in a way that was unique to me and that was really authentic to who I am. Yeah. We talked about this yesterday uh, about how folks get wrapped up in, well, I want to achieve this level of success, whatever whatever that might be. It might just be, hey, I need to make a little bit of additional couple hundred bucks a month and how am I, how am I going to do that? Or I want to quit my day job and, and do this thing like sell product or services. So we go and we look for these quick one-off like, if I just buy this course, I can do one, two, three, and naturally my PayPal account Will just go up and to the right, and you right. know I can I can buy that boat. I can kick my heels up uh, on an island somewhere, but it's not the case. Um, how how do you think that you brought that authenticity into? So I say that because sometimes folks follow these lists; they're just echoing what somebody else did. Did right. Uh, we even see that in the design world when people are quote unquote inspired by. And then you like check the source code or whatever, and it's like the same exact CSS that you use in your project. You're like, aha, you're just exactly. copying my stuff. <laughs> um, how did you bring that? What level now do you say, you know what? I'm satisfied in this course because I feel that this is more authentic. What, what part of it? Uh, makes sense. Well, yeah. let me say that I've taken a lot of freelancing courses myself and a lot of business development courses, and I've gotten things out of all of them. Um, however, this one, I really didn't want to say, this is what you should do. Add this to your process. You need all of these steps to make your clients happy. That's not me, and that's not what I want to put out there for other people. And so really what I'm saying is I, this is how I've been able to do it. Um, provided an income for my family, and it's actually not as intricate and involved as people make it out to be. In fact, there's a lot of principles that I lay out that kind of tell you to scale back, you know, limit your your package offerings and all of that. So it's it's definitely different from the other stuff I've seen out there, and it's, it's really based off of what has gotten me to the point that I'm at. Yeah. Let's talk about this. Uh, it's... I know it's coming up and we are going to talk about it later on, but I want to get right into it right now. Let's talk about the branding um, of yourself. Um, you mentioned uh, single mom, three children, and this is the sweat, blood, blood, sweat, and tears that you're putting into uh, this product to make a living. Tell us yeah. about, for the folks who are coming from my audience who, who haven't met you yet, tell us uh, about yourself and about how all of, what all of this means to you. 
Well, it means the world to me, actually. You know, for I've been in business for seven years, but for the first four years, it was just a hobby. I was a homemaker, and I did it on the side. We, my husband was in the army, and we moved around, and it was something fun to do. And then three, uh, two and a half years ago, uh, PTSD pretty much ripped apart my family, and all of a sudden, I was left with three kids, a mortgage, everything to deal with, and somehow I had to pay for it all. <laughs> And so I was able to take my hobby and really ramp it up and create a business that now supports other people as well. And it, I did it all for my home. I did it all without going to school for an education, you know. And um, that that is really important to me. And the fact that I'm a mom in WordPress is important to me. And I saw an article floating around the other day on Twitter. Um, I'll have to go back and see if I can find the link, but it was about how we need more moms in WordPress. And so this kind of design business is really suited to someone who is in my exact position or anyone who has obstacles that, you know, where they don't want to go out and get a 9-to-5 job or they want to leave their 9-to-5 job in order to do something that really fulfills them more. Yeah. So this is the perfect business for that. Yeah. The, the great thing, and, and by the way, anybody who's listening, if anybody can find that, to, if anybody knows that, the link to that article, if you could just tweet that out with the hashtag Matt Report, I'll, I'll make sure we retweet it and then add it later to the show notes for this show. Um, what I was going to say was the, the, the barrier to entry of WordPress is so low um, that it enables folks like you and I to, to kickstart these businesses with very little overhead aside from learning how to do it and how to do it the quote unquote right way uh, if there even is a right way but what's important is that folks who who are saying look it's time to pay the bills for whatever reason that you don't stay in that hobby mode right and we're going to talk about that later on about knowing your strengths yeah. we're not going to stay in the hobby mode because you just can't afford to right and then you find yourself saying well why aren't I getting more clients why aren't projects going south? Why am I getting scope creep? It might be because you haven't really taken it seriously in, this, in the role that you're in. Yeah. Um, we talked about yesterday, when we talked about the digital product and how you sell a theme. Let me take a step back. So WordPress is a culture. We just, we're, we're starting to talk about that now. We're saying that because WordPress is so easy to get into, so many of us are enabled to run jobs that there's this culture within WordPress for the business owners uh, and developers and designers, but there's this culture within WordPress. Then there's Genesis, Studio Press, and those folks, Copy Blogger. That's a whole culture. That's a culture within a culture, right? Yeah. And you said you had the foodie theme, your theme. There's a culture there. So it's a culture, culture, culture. So. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's another culture within that where you have folks who are using the foodie theme to even have little microservices of their own. They're doing how-to tutorials. They're probably doing setups and installations based off of your product. Did you plan on this or did it just happen? Absolutely not. No way did I plan on this. Um, but it's really neat to see how the online world really embraces things. And, you know, I love that WordPress community. I, I really love that Genesis community. And, um, you know, to see other people rally around Foodie and kind of build businesses on it themselves is really inspiring that, that you can take nothing. There's nothing here. There's no physical product, but you can build an income on it, and you're helping other people in the process. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> we also talked about how the Foodie theme started at one price, went to another price, and now it's, is it the most expensive theme that they have? I believe offered. it is, yeah. And unless something has been added that I'm not sure about, it is, yes. Let's talk about that. It, when you started off, was it just, hey, I'm, I'm happy to sell this thing, but then the support stuff started trickling in, then you had to start to reinvest in it, and then you said, you know what, it's time to, to, to bump this up. Or was it just, hey, look, this, this is a sought-after product. It's just a damn good product, and folks are going to have to just shell out a little bit more coin for it. I think it was a little bit of both because, yeah, at first I really just wanted to make back what I had put into it. It was kind of a passion project for me. I wanted to try it out. I wasn't sure if it was going to do anything, and I really just wanted to make that money back. And then a year later, it's still the number one selling theme at Studio Press, and we uh, put some more development time into it, added some more features, um, you know, really brought it up to date. And then when we decided to relaunch it as Foodie Pro, uh, I knew that it was time to to have a more premium price for it. 
Yeah. And, and were you afraid? What was that like? Because I know you and I talk about pricing for your course. So what was it like for, <laughs> for pricing I'm, that theme? I am always afraid of pricing. Um, but I got some great advice from, you know, other people in the business. And um, it, it turned out to be a great thing. You know, Foodie Pro is now selling more than it ever has before. So it's, it's people are willing to pay it because it's a good product. Yeah, yeah. awesome. That's awesome. The thing that's sort of near and dear to my heart is <clears throat> running half of an a running half agency and half product, and how the yep. hell you do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so how do you do it? I mean, at, you must be now thinking like getting into this second educational product, um, adding again to your inventory of products, and then you have your client stuff. You must be thinking, you know, how how am I going to balance this? Do I go sixty forty? Do I go eighty twenty? So break that right. down for us. Well, it's an interesting balance, and I think that depends on every individual. Um, you know, you have an agency going on where you have other people working with you, and that, that you know, I think that would be really cool to do. Um, but I, I, I haven't really decided yet which way I'm going to go. Do I want to step back and just be happy being a freelancer because it's really, really rewarding? and um, Or do I want to go forward to that agency side, you know, of being able to take on more clients and... Um, do more products and all of that, but um, you know I do have a team of support people who help with the product side of things. So once I launch a product, it's it's um, a lot easier for me to just take a break and work on clients for a while. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, it, but, but those clients are necessary in order to be able to sell that product. You have to have that client side to really you know diversify how you're making money. Yeah. What do you think is holding you back from just saying, you know what, I'm going all in agency style? <laughs> um, <laughs> there's a million different things. I really enjoy being a freelancer. I enjoy being able to just not work one day because my kid's sick or to work while my kids are sick or something like that. You know, I love that freedom. Um, and so, I don't know, maybe one day I'll, I'll decide to do that, but I haven't, I'm just not at that point right now. Yeah, there's... You know, all of the advice in the world, and, and I get this a lot, of course, on the Matt Report, is, you know, how do you do pricing? How do you get clients to pay you when, when you start doing uh, bigger bigger budgets? And, you know, there, this, is, like, this is the game, right? This is the game. The, the client services is all about that relationship. Um, we're going to talk later on about contracts. So, of course, that's, like, right up there with, with, with all of that. But still, even with contracts and invoices and milestones, the game is they, they don't pay you for a week, right? And you have a rapport with people, and it's much different when you're at, you know, like I, I, I'm boutique agency size. I'm not agency size, like like 10 up or web dev. Yeah. Um, I'm boutique agency, six to eight people. Um, for, you know, for the smaller freelancer or consultant, it still hurts. Um, the difference is when you're the boutique agency is you have people to pay. Right, there are people on payroll. <laughs> Absolutely, so oh, that's there, a great point. <laughs> there, there is a, a a whole different. You know, it's you can read all of the consulting blogs in the world and be like, be firm with your with your client and tell them to pay you now. Well, yeah, sure. If I want to <laughs> lose them, right? You know, right. Or in like we talked about yesterday about contracts, it's it's easy to say, well, it's in the contract, but do you want to get all legal and start like talking like that, or do you want to have this relationship that you're building with folks and and it's just a fine balance, you know. It, it's you, you. This is agency. This I. This is why I love it and I hate it all at the same time, <laughs> right? Because it is very much that rapport, um, you know. And some clients you can call up and say, "Hey, man, where's your content?" You know, you haven't you haven't sent content content in like two weeks. We're th we're two weeks behind the milestone. Send me your content. You can right. be super direct. In others, it's the professional approach, you know. Dear marketing manager, we've <laughs> noticed that you've missed, you know. <laughs> Three milestones in this project. Um, well, what so, Matt? What made you go the agency route? Say that again. What made you go the agency route? Um, you know, I, the reason why I went agency route is because when we talk about knowing your strengths, I'm going to say, I'm not a designer, I'm not a developer, I'm just the business guy and business development guy, right? I run the business with my father. We both do sales. We both do business developments. We look for opportunity. Um, and relationships and that's where we're most comfortable I can do things in WordPress you know I can customize the loop <laughs> I can build a template right I can do those things um, 
I find myself fairly good at server management sometimes, uh, so I can do that kind of thing, but I don't want to make that my priority, right? Um, that is not my skill. Uh, and uh, so building a team was, was super important to do that. Right. That's a great question. I've never had anybody ask me questions in the middle. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to stay on course, Shay. I'm trying to Sorry. stay. Well, well, yeah, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, speaking of course, let's talk about the course. Um, this is your second product. Like we mentioned before, it's a five-day course. It's sort of that I, when, I was, when I was getting into it and I, and I was approaching you to see if you wanted to be on the show to talk about it, I was asking, is it a drip campaign like we all talk about, you know, sign up, get one, one day, get the next one the next week, questions, answers, that kind of thing. But you... You said it was, and it's just, here you go, five days, all you can eat, sort of Netflix style, right? Yeah. How come you went that route? Well, I love the way you put that Netflix style because, like, I, I could have done the drip, the drip campaign, and I could have, you know, spaced it out, and honestly, that's how I did my last course, Garnish, was once a week I would put out new content. And um, I think this time I just wanted to lay it out, especially for the people who I'm hoping this is going to serve, you know, the people who want to freelance and work for themselves and build a design business. Uh, if they're like me, you just want to get that information and soak it up. So <laughs> you can either, like, take your time and be really reflective and take all five days to do it, or you can just binge and get it all at once and really just, like, let it work and simmer and, you know, hash it out in your head. Yeah, I, I, I think that, number one, the design of the course is, is amazing, obviously, uh, as if Thank I were ex expecting something else from you. Uh, but the, uh, you know, you have that resource section. You have the downloadable resource section. I, I forget how you word it right off the top of my head, but... Yeah, resource library. Resource yeah. library. You know, that's... The, what you just said right there is like, I just want to hop in and be like, download all this stuff, and let me just start looking at these PDFs, and I kind of, because I don't know, that's how I approach everything, I sort of reverse engineer everything, so I start like at the end, and then I work my way back, <laughs> weird, I don't know. Um, and see, but, that, that's unique to you, and everybody has their own way of doing it, so yeah. that's awesome, and so if I just lay it out there, then everyone can take it, and, and really make it work for them. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, start diving into these 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 course uh, bullet points that we have. So now if you're still in the audience, I see that we're at the highest number of viewers right now, as suspected or expected. Uh, designbizcrashcourse.com slash matreport. That'll save you 50 bucks uh, on today's course. Only available uh, during the show, maybe a little bit afterwards, but if you want to get in at $50 less than anybody ever, 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 <laughs> This is the way to do it. Design Biz Crash Course uh, slash Matt Report, and you can join up today for 50 bucks off. Five days, we're going to pull out three days, maybe three and a half, and kind of chat about this stuff. Day number one, we're skipping right over, right? No, day number no, we're one, <laughs> we're, we're pulling out the know your strengths. Yeah. Right? That's, that's part of, of course number one, uh, day number one. We talked about this earlier, how you built the brand. You have... The, the moms and WordPress brand. Um, are there other areas that you see in in the WordPress space that would be beneficial uh, for somebody to, to to jump into, like designers for WordPress? But that's probably way too broad. Um, what other areas do you think is unique to our to our area? Um, I think all of them. You know, I can speak to the moms and WordPress because that's what I am. Um, but um, I also would love to see more women in WordPress, or you know. Um, I don't know, but even even men, I don't know. I don't want to like <laughs> narrow it down and say only these people, but I think um, yeah, I think it's it's wide open to anyone, and that's the important part. There, it's it's equality for everyone. You know, yeah. there is no uh, one type of person who's going to do better than another. Yeah, uh, we we also talked yesterday about knowing that audience, um, and obviously you know your audience really well because you are a mother of three, so that. You know, obviously, uh, works really well for you, but uh, you didn't plan on this. Um, but how does that relate? You didn't plan on you know have, building this community of of moms uh, and the foodie group, but you did say something about you you knew you wanted to work with these folks, right? The folks who yeah. were buying the themes. So let's talk about that. How did you what break down that process? You launched foodie the foodie pro theme, or it was just the foodie theme, then it went to foodie pro, but 
T tell me about that story about the finding uh, people for site customizations and how that kind of grew for you. Well, honestly, um, it came out of it came completely out of my client work. Um, I um, do really well in the creative blogging space. Um, and specifically food blogs, and there, there is a huge culture just around food blogging, and um, the way they all network and, and get together and support each other, it's really awesome, very similar to the WordPress or Genesis communities, and so it was neat to kind of support them in that by offering what I have, which is design and development, and so, um, you know, knowing my strengths and what I can offer them, um, it really kind of filled a need I think and they filled a need in me and knowing that what kind of projects I wanted to work on um, because when I started walk, working with food blogs it wasn't intentional I didn't mean to do it I just kind of had a couple of come my way and it felt awesome like like we got each other and um, like I have a passion for like nutrition and sustainable food and all of that and so it, we felt like we understood each other I think through the design process and so that's when I knew that's what I wanted to work on and knowing that that was the kind of niche that I wanted to go down and that's 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 it right there right that's knowing that <clears throat> you know what you can do you know what you can perform on right that's the most important part you look at your strengths like you said to me about the agency thing why grow an agency? Why hire a team? Because I don't find myself that good at it. Um, and these folks will do it, you know, a hundred times better than I will. Match that up with understanding your audience at the same time. It's, it's a one-two knockout, right? It's, it's just perfect, the perfect balance for that. Absolutely. Um, at what point did you say it's, it's, or so let's t tell me about development. Developing the theme, adding to the theme and your products, how did you find somebody to, to help you out with that? That's a perfect that's a perfect example of knowing your strengths because even though I can do some development, I'm not a developer. And so I knew that if I wanted to release a theme or um, you know, for a wide audience that I needed someone who really, really knew what they were doing. And so I actually asked around to other designers. Um, there there's that networking that's very important. Um, but so I asked around to see what other designers were doing and somebody told me about this thing called a theme audit and I was like, oh, that sounds so cool, let me do that. And so I actually got in touch with uh, my developer, Rob New, who audited the theme and he was amazing and he's been a huge part of Foodie's success, obviously. So that was me knowing that you know, I'm not that good at that kind of thing and reaching out to others. And it's very important when you're a freelancer and you don't have that agency setting, you have to be able to reach out to other people who can kind of fulfill the areas where you're you're just not that much of an expert in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, shout out to Rob New. We always like to promote him on the show. Great Absolutely. guy. Um, super intelligent. The, you know, the other thing about knowing your strengths is also not wearing so many hats right now this kind of goes back I, this also lends hand in hand to the product development side but more so the consulting and agency side when you're like you know hey boy these these projects are dragging me down I'm not profitable or I am profitable I'm just getting by it's sort of um, this isn't the life that I thought I was gonna have <laughs> when I started my consultancy it's mm -hmm. because you probably haven't taken a step back and looked at all of the stuff that goes on when you interact with a client. You're doing marketing, right, to find these clients, maybe. You're doing pre-sales where you're having these discovery phone calls and sort of feeling out the project. Is it the right fit? Yes, no. There's the invoicing side of it, writing the contract. There's the financing and accounting side of it. Like, we haven't even got to starting to sketch out yet. <laughs> like, we're not even sketching out the website yet. We're talking about right. all of this stuff that you haven't begun to either one account for if you're finding yourself uh, sort of low on the margin side but on the stress side and why am I doing this if you're finding yourself in those situations those are the things you really need to start to outsource and if you can't outsource now because of money or revenue or whatever uh, you need to start taking strides to um, on your next project right you always have a reset button on the next project right Absolutely. <laughs> you can always say I went from $100 to 125 and then you realize I go from 125 to 200 <laughs> on the next one. Uh, you always have sort of that cushion. It's not always that easy, sounds easy, but that's one thing that you can do to sort of balance the stress of all of these other roles and the business, right? 
especially yeah. if you're a, especially if you're a consultant. We talked about this yesterday. I'd love to hear more about it from your end. But the project management side, right? There's that whole thing too. Like <clears throat> halfway, th like during the the process of building out somebody's site, your strength is design. So you're designing, and now the customer wants to meet to talk about the color blue that you used, <clears throat> and they wanted the color green, right? <laughs> so now yeah. you're project managing, and you're just like, I'm not getting paid for this stuff unless you are through your contract or something like that. But let's talk about that. How do you sort of balance all of those hats to know the strength of what you're can what you're gonna do? Right. Well, for me, that that goes to setting up expectations for my clients and making sure they know ahead of time what I will and will not do. And uh, we'll go through that later, I guess, with contracts as well. But letting them know up front what you know, my role is and what their role is and what I'm comfortable with and knowing what they're comfortable with, that kind of alleviates all that for me. Um, and a particular um, thing that I bring up in the course is I am not good on the phone. Like sitting right here right now is terrifying to me. So like phone conversations with clients, not going to happen. And I know that for most freelancers, most design agencies, that's a must. You have to have phone conversations with clients. But for me, I've been able to do it hundreds of projects without a single phone conversation. And so it's just letting them know up front and finding the clients who that works well with too. And that's, you know, then it's going to work out and we're going to be set up for success in the first place. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and that's about, again, it goes back to knowing your strength. If you don't like being on the phone, you find it very uh, either stressful or bothersome, um, or quite frankly, it just eats up so much time. True. <laughs> the, these are things that you set the expectation for. And I know we do that um, with our contracts, sort of just outlining <clears throat> you know, if it's, a, if it's a particular service contract, like an ongoing service contract, um, it's outlined of saying, what does this entail? Does this entail in-person meetings? Does it entail, uh, you know, one-hour stand-up meetings throughout, you know, through the month? Uh, and the stand-up meeting might be through Skype or on the phone or whatever, uh, or no dialogue at all, just right through our email help desk system uh, and our project management system. And that's what you get for this price point. You want more of us? It costs, you know, you have to get up onto this tier, that kind of thing. Right. Um, so certainly those are the things, especially when we were talking about, do I want to be an agency or do I not? Those are things that definitely come into play. Anything else about the strengths that you want to mention or anything else from day one uh, that you want to give away as a takeaway? Well, a lot of day one is talking about how to overcome your obstacles. And, uh, you know, I have a history of that, of having all of these obstacles in my way and, um, you know, I wanted to make sure that other people know that no matter what your obstacles are, you you can do this. This is something that could actually work with your obstacles, and and it could actually be an asset for you. Yeah. And so I go through a lot of that um, in the first day, just to make sure that everybody knows that you don't have to have like a certain set of set of circumstances in order to start doing this, start freelancing. Yeah, uh, it's so true. Um, you know, I think, I know from, from my point of view, from the folks that I talk to, people just get overwhelmed. They get way too overwhelmed, right? They, they're trying to tackle way too much at once. Um, one of the things that you mentioned before, which I wanted to, re to leave a comment on was, you said, because I, I'm working with agents, or ex when I, because I'm working with clients, I sort of have an ear to the ground of what they need in their solution. And that sort of transfers over to my products. Um, and that's, for me, is like, that's like the number one lesson. People are like, oh, Matt, you know, you, you're doing themes and plugins because you want to get out of the service industry, right? It's like, no, I don't really because I find if I, my, my gut feeling is if I ever pull out of the service, um, client service arena, then I'm going to lose touch with what publishers want or what universities want out of content plugins like we do. So I don't ever want to e exit that. I just want to elevate it. <laughs> I just want to get it right. to the next. I just want to get it to the next level, um, so that I can keep talking uh, to the to the clients and the audience that I want to help mature the products. Yeah. Day number two. What's the title of day number two? Day two is um, well. I think we're skipping day two. Oh, oh we, we are. are. We are. But day two is. Um, Pitch me the softball, Shay. Pitch me the softball. <laughs> Guiding principles, and this is kind of a funky day where I kind of go through some different principles and laws that I've picked up along the way. Um, if you're a trained designer or you're well-read, you may already know of some of them, but I kind of like twist them and 
um, kind of show you how I use them in my business um, as opposed to just in my design practices. And if you want it, we're not going to talk about it here. It's only in the course. Day number two is only in the course. Uh, and again, if you're, if you're watching this and you want to get in on the cheap, I don't want to say cheap, on the affordable, designbizcrashcourse.com slash report. You can grab this course that we're talking about and all these other days. If you have questions while you're watching this, hashtag report and Q&A uh, in Google Hangout. Click that, drop your question, and we'll get that answered towards the end of the show. Keep those questions coming. Carrie Dills has already chimed in asking, why do you want to beat me in iTunes? Because I want to win, Carrie. Because I want to win. <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. We're skipping day three, right? We're also skipping day three. Well, we're, we're going to talk about that a little bit later. We're, yeah, well. yeah, we're going to talk about it later. Sorry. I, mean, I get these notes. Well, I don't even know why I do notes. Why do I do <laughs> notes? We're skipping day three right now. We're going to day four because it really uh, transitions well from what we just talked about, setting expectation and things like that. And that's one of the resources you have there is the contract. Right? Yeah. So I'll let, you I'll let you position day four, and then we can get into talking about that. Okay, yeah, day four is all about my process and workflow, um, and it is, I kind of follow the same kind of typical four-step process that most designers or um, freelancers follow, however I do it in a slightly minimalistic way, um, and I try to make it as um, lean as possible in my process. But on day four, I am giving away, or not giving away, but as part of day four, are four documents that I actually use in my business. They have allowed me to win huge contracts. Um, and so we've got a um, design brief, a contract, uh, a, like a welcome packet that I send out to my clients, and a concept board that I use when I'm presenting concepts to clients. And the contracts. Yes, contracts. Let's talk about this. This is my favorite section of the whole course. Right? Like I said, I like to download things. I like to go through them. Yeah. We talked about setting that expectation. Um, one of the things that you said that you have, a represent, you have an example of is the welcome packet, right? Yeah. We are going to talk about the contracts, but I just want to leave a comment about this. So you have a welcome packet. I have a belief document is what I call it. Give us a real quick, don't go into too much giving it away for free, but tell us about that welcome packet and how that sets the expectation for the upcoming legal contract, 300 pages slammed down to the desk like the, <laughs> we're not messing around here thing. Um, tell us what that welcome packet does for you. Well, for me, the welcome packet, um, I don't send it to every client. It depends on the client that I feel like needs it, um, but it sets them up to um, just get an inside look at like my how things are going to work out when we're working together. Um, it tells them a, about Genesis and all of the, all of the details that, that are, they're going to need to know later on. But mostly for me, the welcome packet is more about making the client feel a part of the process and feel like they have information. Because um, usually when someone hires you online, they're kind of iffy, like, well, how is this going to work out? I don't know what I'm doing kind of thing. So with the welcome packet, it's just kind of like, woohoo, party, we're working together. You know, this is what, what you can expect from here forward. And yours, so much nicer than mine. <laughs> um, well, thank you, but I love the name of yours, Belief Doc. I love that. Ours like sort it. of is really a, a tone setter. It's something that says, here's what we believe in. Do we feel like, do, are we a good fit? Right? This is something that um, I got some advice on from another podcast, and of course now uh, the name is escaping me. But, um, and he's not even in the web design business. Anyway, so the belief document says comes before we start talking about the project, the negotiations. It's here's how we work. Uh, does this work for you? Um, tell us how you work so we know if it works for us. Uh, and it sort of just has some guiding principles about how we approach projects um, that we do not, there's no rush delivery on anything. You know, and if there is, and the contract is like emergency work price number that says it's going to be like four times more, um, there's none of that uh, project pricing, that all that kind of thing. But it really sets the tone of who we are and what we do, which then leads into the ever important contract that when we do sign, all of those deliverables are there. So let's unpack that. Let's unpack that contract for you. Um, you said you didn't, you never wanted to get into sort of that legal dispute or even that legal talk with your clients. 
Um, do you have a, an example of when you didn't have a contract and what happened and now you have that contract? <laughs> or is right. there anything like that? Right, yeah, I have a perfect example, actually. Um, I Before I started doing contracts, I kind of just took projects on as, as they came and sent them a PayPal link, and, you know, it was really easy, but it wasn't protecting myself in any way. And um, in one particular project, the client was actually really happy with the outcome, and it was an awesome design. We were all happy with it. I actually worked overtime over Christmas in order to get it accomplished for them because they wanted it rushed done, and they paid well for that. And then right using they didn't want to pay for the project and they demanded a refund well I said I don't offer refund sorry you paid me for the work that I did and um, you know I didn't have that contract to go back and say look you signed this saying that my theme isn't necessarily going to work with every plugin out there you know so now that I have a contract the client knows that ahead of time. I've never been asked about that since because that expectation has been set up front. And my contract is pretty lengthy and includes a lot of stuff, but it's all about letting the client know what they're actually going to get out of it and what they're they're not going to be able to ask me for a refund later when this freak accident happens and it, you know something doesn't work. So, um, you know. For me, it's less about the legal side of things. I don't think I'm ever going to take a client to court, you know, to try to get paid or anything. But it's about making sure that the client understands those expectations and they know it's serious because they're having to sign a document. Yeah. Um, it's you know, it's not awesome that that happened to you, but it's an <laughs> but it makes for an awesome story, right? Uh, like I like we were talking about yesterday. It's these failures that sort of. Um, Sort of the, the you know the 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 compounding effect of, of where we are today, uh, you know same thing really for us. Uh, or actually, before I get into that, how long do you spend on explaining the contract to your client? Um, do they come back and say, you know, what is this copyright message about? Like, what? what tell me that about that process. Um, I've only had that happen one time, to be honest with you. Most clients are pretty comfortable with my contract, and maybe it's just the kind of client that I'm working with, but I've never had someone second-guess it. Um, I have had questions about it one time, and it was from a um, kind of a big product company, and it's not the typical client that I usually work with. So I guess that's it depends on who you're working with sure. as to if you're going to get those questions or not. But, um, yeah, most of the time it's pretty straightforward and and people understand it and they accept it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I know for us, like, we have, you know, for probably, you know, 50% of our client work, it's, you know, it's either marketing or brochureware sites and or small e-commerce sites. So, you know, the, the back and forth of legal isn't really, uh, isn't really there. But on our bigger contracts or our more in-depth development projects, it's like, uh, this is, you know, going back to consultant or agency, it's like, oh, okay, we got to send it to the legal department. The legal department's going to look at it. And then they say, okay, well, here's our contract. How about we use our contract? And then our oh wow, people have to I would be like, it. no way. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> uh, you know, so but again, these are the th like this is the game of if, as you elevate into these bigger th into these bigger clients. You know, this is the stuff that comes up. And sure, yeah. You know, I'm sure once you have once you get to a certain size um, uh, as an agency of your own, these things sort of uh, are, are are taken care of, and they're much more more uh, streamlined because you're just bigger, you have more assets, um, that kind of thing. But in the in the game of the boutique agency, these are the things that cost money, time and money, um, you know, and, and things that really sort of can scare you a little bit, right? Yeah. Um, we also talked yesterday about the one thing that's not in the contract, the one thing that will never be in the contract, and the one thing that should never be in your contract if you're listening and that's guaranteeing satisfaction and or success. Um, but we all want each project to be successful, right? We want our clients to be successful with what they're building them. So what are your thoughts uh, on that in terms of do you put that in the contract or is that part of the welcome packet? Like what does that look like in your world? Yeah, I have a, a section in my contract that just basically says that you're paying me for the work that I'm doing on this website. 
and I include one concept and two revisions or whatever the dynamic is. And beyond that, anything beyond that, then it's billable. And so if I, I can guarantee satisfaction as long as you're going to keep paying me for the time I'm working on it. I mean, <laughs> I can do that. So, um, you know, but I, I have seen, like, agencies who guarantee satisfaction on what they do, but they're charging big bucks. So when you're in kind of, like, my space, you know, of this small, you know, freelancer status, working with blogs or small businesses, you know, you can't do that. There's no way you could do that. You'd be working on a project forever. Right. So, yeah. And that's a, that's a, that's a tremendous point because, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you want, you, do you want me to satisfy you? No problem. Just keep the money coming in, <clears throat> and I'll be here all day long. <laughs> yeah. Want me to dance around on the stage? Hey, I'll do it. You just keep feeding me, uh, feeding the PayPal account. No problem. But on a serious <laughs> note, I'm glad you brought that up um, because I almost forgot about it. The thing that you and I talked about yesterday, we're talking about that experience, right? When we talk about how folks, and this is going to lead into getting clients, right, and, <clears throat> and, and kind of retaining clients or getting clients on referral is and I think about this on our agency side and our product side is how many people talk about other companies that have amazing experiences? We talked about this yesterday, like Apple products. It was such an amazing experience. <clears throat> I broke my iPad. I just bought it last week. I walked in. They gave me another one, right? We would never do that if somebody's site got hacked because they left the, you know, the password admin. We wouldn't go in and just rebuild it for free, right? Right. Um, Tesla. Oh my God, it's such a beautiful car. They bring it to you. They bring it down on a helicopter. I don't know. I'd like to buy a Tesla one day, but you know, it's all wrapped up and you know, you got a nice bow on it. It's amazing. Or a Mercedes or something like that. It's an amazing experience, right? The car's a hundred thousand dollars, right? <laughs> and you can't just go in, even if you have a hundred thousand dollars, you can't just go buy it because there's a waiting list. Uh, there's you know priority. There's all this other stuff. Uh, Virgin Air. Yeah, you walk on. They give you drinks. There's lights flying around. Music. Everything. It's such a beautiful experience, right? Southwest, not so much. You better hope that you can get to the gate and stiff arm somebody so you can get in line so you can be the first one, uh, you know, on an aisle seat. But the point is, is these experiences are great because they're high ticket items, right? Absolutely. Don't talk about my ex the only, the only, I don't ever walk out of Walmart and say, well, that was great. Man, I, I can't wait to go back. <laughs> like, I never say that, ever. I, I say, I don't want to walk in here, is what I say. Um, but the, the, the point is, is these companies can have, can afford these experiences for their customers because they are high ticket items, right? Why not have high ticket consulting services so that you can afford to do that? I'm not saying you have to charge a ridiculous amount of money in order to provide your customer with good satisfaction or a good experience, but man, it sure helps to be the richest company in the world <laughs> <laughs> uh, to be able to do these types of things. So it's just a different way of thinking. Right? Why give in, in WordPress, and you and I know this, especially in WordPress themes, is you're giving away a lot for very little money, right? And if you catch that, that person who doesn't know how to put a WordPress site together or they're brand new to WordPress, they blame your theme for everything, right? Then they want to customize it and change it for, you know, however you had envisioned it. They want to change it. And you're not going to really do that for them for 40 bucks, 50 bucks, 120 bucks. Um... So that was a big bit of a ramble, but what do you think about that, about providing more value but also increasing that value because of the dollars? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm completely on board with you there, and I have premium pricing in my client services as well. And, you know, I go through all of that on day five of my course, um, all about money and how to charge, you know, a good amount so that you can provide great value to your clients, you know. It's, it's not just about getting rich, it's about what you're providing to them and the value that you're giving them. And in order to give that value, you have to charge a premium price. Yeah. Have you ever just added a zero on to the end of a project? Like, did you ever, like, scope something out and be like, you know what, I'm just going to add another zero to the end of this and see what happens. Did you ever do that? I've never done that, but now you've inspired me. I might have to. I do have to say that just a few weeks ago, I sent out a proposal to a client. It was the largest project I've ever taken on, and it was signed and paid for within 30 minutes. And I was thinking, oh, my God, I should have charged a whole lot more. <laughs> See? See? <clears throat> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break this down. But before, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preface this. Okay, so we're going to we're gonna talk about money and stuff. We're not going to talk about money and stuff. Shay's okay. going to teach you that on day five. We're not going to talk about day five, but you can go buy day five 
uh, at designbizcrashcourse.com slash matreport. I am told, however, Shay, that when folks are trying to check out, they're saying that the site is still in test mode uh, for that no. check. So All right. I'll give you a second to repair that while okay. I go on another, another ramble. So folks, bear with me. Um, getting the clients, right, and um, moving into the, that arena uh, of day three. We went from day four to day three. We talk about getting these clients and, and getting these referrals. But I'm always inspired by the Gary Vaynerchuk story. I'm sure most of you know, raise your hands, uh, most of you know Gary Vaynerchuk. He talked about building uh, his agency <clears throat> and how he started out. And he started out by saying, I'm going to go to somebody, I'm going to do a project for 5000 bucks," And then that person said yes. Then he went to the next person and he said, well, that was easy. I'm going to go to the next person and say 10000 bucks," And that person said yes. And he's like, man, this is this is getting too easy. Gets to the next person to twenty five thousand bucks, and he said, and they said yes. And he's like, boy, this is even this is too easy. Go to the next person. He says thirty five thousand bucks. Guy says, fuck you. He says, okay, okay, thirty grand. I'll do it for thirty grand. And he goes, okay, I'll do it for thirty grand. So he just kept adding, you know, kept adding zeros. Um, oh my goodness. And, until you know, until he finally hit that wall because it's scary at first, but when you're bringing like ridiculous value, like that, whatever number you threw out to that client. They might have been like, "Wow, that's it." You yeah. Um, like you, you have this ridiculous amount of value, and and I know, but you were like, oh, "I should have, I should have charged more." I come from the car car sales, um, and if somebody said yes too fast, I was like, "Nope, that's it." <laughs> you know, like I should ask for more, right? So I've always had that in me, and it's again, it's not about price gouging or just charging for the sake of charging. It's getting the value that you're worth, um, so you can be profitable. Uh, and you can reinvest into your business, right? Because mm -hmm. there will be dips. There will be dips, um, you know, in your in your revenue. It's the nature of the business. Holiday seasons come. I know for us, negotiating with corporate customers, they're all on vacation. You know, end of the summer, they're all on vacation. None of the decision makers are around, um, and that has a dramatic impact on our business for bringing in new uh, revenue. Right? It's just the nature of the beast. I mean, if hey, if somebody's out there and you know how to solve that, hit me up. <laughs> matreport.com slash contact. I'd love to know how you solve that besides retainer contracts, which we already do. All right. Let's go into the third and final segment of the show. Is that uh, the checkout page all set? Yeah, it should be. Beautiful. I just, yeah. Sorry about that. That's fine. That's <laughs> fine. Everybody who's uh, swiping their credit cards can go back and try it again. <laughs> Designbizcrashcourse.com design biz slash matreport and save $50 today. All right. Getting new clients. Day number three. We've built culture, and now we're starting to talk about referrals and how, for your business, referral is the majority. So let us know uh, what that's like for you. Absolutely. When well, when I first started my business, um, I didn't come from a design background. I didn't have a network of other people to work with or anything like that. And so I put my services up on Etsy, and um, I still see all the time. I see um, you know designers and and um, you know, WordPress people who are putting their services up on there, and it, it does really well. And it was a way just to get in the door and get a few clients. Then I could then put in my portfolio and get more. And what helped me is I had two particular clients that I worked with repeatedly. Um, we loved each other. They loved me. I loved them. I was really invested in their business. I wanted to help them grow their businesses. And in return, they helped me grow my business by telling everyone about me. And um, all of a sudden, I found myself with this whole client list of mom bloggers, and I was backed up six months in advance. And over time, that has morphed into food blogging. And I have three particular clients that I work with repeatedly. We've been partners. I, I see us as partners because, you know, they hire me over and over and over again to do work for them, and they're telling everyone about me and, um, you know, bringing me new clients all the time. So that's been really important for me, and it, it's neat to see that change from in the beginning where I didn't have any clients, and just a few key relationships has created, you know, now I'm booked up through the rest of the year. Mm. So it's it's really worked out. So I definitely recommend doing that. One of the things we, we chatted about earlier was the retainers, <clears throat> and I sort of hinted at that before, retainers uh, versus the project. Um, Break that down for us and give us your advice on when you're, when you're getting these clients and, and sort of the, um, the advantages of doing that retainership and building these partnerships. 
uh, retainership, <laughs> getting yeah. that retainer Anywhere. and building those <laughs> relationships. Um, tell us the advantage about that. The You don't do every client on a retainer, um, but let's talk about that when you get these clients in. Uh, give us your, your insight to retainer versus projects. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't recommend pitching a retainer uh, I, uh, situation to every client. Um, but uh, uh, I've only ever done two retainer clients, and those are two retainer clients that let me do what I needed to do and who appreciated the work that I did and understood the process and we really got each other and I was really excited about helping their business grow at the same time and so uh, you know these particular clients had me on retainer for a year where I got to do work for them every month and it was a nice steady work even though with retainer you charge a little bit less in order to have that steady work coming in and so it was um, it was nice to have that but I definitely wouldn't do that with everyone because I would be going mad with all of the questions and people are kind of crazy and want weird things sometimes so and that's that's when the agency model starts to look attractive to you right <laughs> I don't know <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a few things you said in there and I want to unpack that so you number one we work so hard to get these clients and you know part one of your advice is you sort of build that culture you find the people that align with your strengths and you really enjoy doing the work together with yeah. and then you said the word appreciated right because so f I don't want to say few but it does become you know especially when you have that client back and forth if they don't get what you're doing they don't know like they don't understand your process and you're showing them like wireframes and they're like what's this wireframe like is this the design what's all this black and white like <laughs> if they don't understand what's going on that sort of gets them on edge because they're worried it's not their fault they're not in this business as much as we are but again if you did all that front loading of expectation of your process this sort of stuff should start to um, you know be uh, squelched a little bit the um, appreciation they appreciate the work that you do. How do, how do you get them to appreciate the work that you do aside from just good looking design? Uh, is there a tack to that? Like are you always like sending them thank you cards at every milestone? <laughs> and they're like, wow, this, no, is, this is nice. I wish I did that. I'm not organized enough to do that. No. That's a loaded question too because I think there's a lot of things that go into play and it does have a lot to do with the expectations that you set up in the beginning and then, you know, that that you know, saying that everyone says under promise over deliver, and so you you always want to hold back a little bit of what you think you can do for the client, and then really wow them. Um, you know, at the end or throughout the process, and really surprise them. When you're surprising them and you're wowing them throughout the process, then um, they're going to be more appreciative later on. But you can never wow them if you're telling them up front, "Yeah, I can do all this stuff for 500 bucks." You're never going to be able to do that. <laughs> Yeah. So. <laughs> um, I was having a discussion. Um, uh, it's uh, apparently <clears throat> folks are still hitting the uh, the testing uh, oh checkout thing. Um, I was having a discussion with my brother, and he's sort of in the financial uh, s services, trading, day trading, that kind of thing. We're talking about pricing a course uh, for himself, and he has like ridiculously good advice. Like he ha he has advice that. It's not like you have to go out and practice this advice. I mean, there are some strategic moves that you can get and literally pay off his course in one trade, right? I mean, you could, you know, if you're trading stocks, you can kind of do this thing and whatever, you can pay off this course. That's not the point. The point is that he has sort of this direct sort of you can act on this and you can you can see the benefits right away. Um, but he has this consulting thing that goes along with it and he's trying to sell to a whole bunch of people at once. I'm like, why Why do you want to answer all of those questions all at once? Your advice is worth so much that you should just have one or two select clients that pay just a higher ticket price so that they can you they that you can afford to give them more of your time. Yeah. Why try to service a hundred people, you know, at a mediocre level, you know, trying to hit all their answers or, or find their different needs uh, when if you just service ten people It'd be so it, it, you would feel more relieved because you would have more time uh, to offer your clients, right? There'd be more, much more time for you to give back to them, and I think that's super important too. Um, you know, when you're when you're once you start getting these clients, finding these clients, and realizing that 
you don't have to jam pack your schedule just to sell hours. Um, you know, sell at a higher value, <clears throat> and you can get less customers and provide more value to them. Let's move on uh, with uh, getting the clients here now. Uh, retainers uh, versus relationships versus the contracts. Uh, what I do like about the retainers, uh, for one, is yeah, you, you charge a little bit less, but it's this recurring income that comes in, so you can kind of bank on it unless you, let's say, f for whatever reason, cancel that contract or that retainer. Um, but it's also about a, a way to discover new stuff uh, with your clients. So if they're on board with you and they're on a retainer level, it could just be your consulting retainer, right? It doesn't always have to be you delivering on deliverables <laughs> or on hours. Um, you do any kind of consulting retainer where they just come to you and say, hey, you know what, Shay? You designed the site. We're going to do this ad promotion this month. What do you think? Like, Do you have any just like straight up consulting gigs on retainer? Um, no, I haven't done that yet. Um, I have people who come back to me and they pay per service. Um, okay. So I, I have a lot of repeat clients who will just every couple of months come back and say, hey, we want you to do this opt-in for us. You know, can you design this and put it up for us or something like that. Uh, but yeah, I haven't done like a retainer situation like that. Okay. Um, it would be interesting, definitely interesting to explore. It's something that we're getting uh, much more involved with because we're <clears throat> once we launch larger uh, clients or larger projects, they were starting to realize that they don't want they don't want their internal team to be responsible for it. So it's kind of, even though we've given them all the uh, you know the the code and it's all documented and we've trained them, um, you know they're saying now you know what you you guys just stay on board with us um, and continue to improve on this as we get requests uh, because we don't want to uh, one we don't have the time for it and two hey you guys built it you guys know what you're talking about. That's uh, awesome. Building the culture was another thing that we started to talk about earlier. Are you doing any, and, and this is about getting new clients, and I know it's sort of working from the ground up, but to find new clients, sort of reverse engineering the clients you already have and maybe getting them to spread the word about you to then get the client, a new client to come in. Do you have any advice about building that culture, anything more that you want to, uh, that you want to share about getting new clients for folks? Um. Yeah, I think there's, um, you know, in the course I talk about several different ways that you can get new clients. This, you know, having referrals like that is just one of them. Um, but a, a lot of my work in the beginning also came from um, networking with other designers in, you know, in the same space. And, um, you know, basically when you showcase what you can do to other people, you don't go up to them and beg and say, can I have all the clients that you can't have, you know, you're, that you can't take on? That would be awful. Don't do that. But, like, making yourself known, you know, letting people know that you're around, that you have some availability, that you're, you know, you're willing to take on more work or help out with other projects is a great way to, you know, in the community, because we have such a big WordPress community, such a big Genesis community, to, to get clients of your own. And... I know in my experience, I'm happy to send clients to other people when I'm full. And early on, it was great to get clients from other designers who were full and they couldn't take on the work. And I think it was uh, Freelancers Union has some kind of stat that's like 80% of all freelancers refer work to other freelancers. And somewhere around like 40 or 50% actually work with other freelancers. So you definitely have to network. And for the introvert, shy person that I am and that most people are, that's hard. But online, it makes it a little bit easier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, no, that's awesome stuff. I mean, same thing. Like we're, as, as sort of we continue to grow, we're getting those requests. Like I'm going, it's it's... It's just the it's just the interesting life cycle. It's like little fish, bigger fish, biggest mm -hmm. fish, whales. <laughs> um, you know, and you know, I go to work camps and other uh, events, and I, I talk to other agencies who are like, hey, look, if you if you have clients that you know just they're just outside of your budget range, I'd be happy to take them. At the same time, um, we get clients that we don't no longer handle, um, and we're starting to send off. Uh, to our list of freelancers. So if you're a freelancer out there, you can shoot me an email. It's mattreportblog at gmail.com and be happy um, to check out uh, your portfolio and your capabilities because that said, I don't just throw people leads because it's also part of my reputation too, right? So if somebody comes to me and they're like, hey, Matt, 
listen to the podcast, watch the YouTube channel. You can do some awesome stuff. I've got this little, you know, you know, fifteen hundred, twenty five hundred dollar project. Can you do it for me? I'm like, well, we really can't at that budget, but I've got this person who does a really good job at it. Yeah. Um, you know, and uh, you know, the point is, is I want to work with people who I feel also can deliver some quality. Um, you know, like we do, or like we strive to do. Day number five. We already, we already said day number five. Day number five is the price. It's all about money. Yeah. It's all about the cash money. So we're gonna jump into questions now, right? Sounds good. And, and I have to apologize. I do not know why this isn't working. So um, we're gonna have to leave it up for a little while so everybody can sign up after I get it fixed because it says it's authenticated, but. I don't know. Is there a cash button in Rainmaker? Is anybody from Rainmaker listening? Yeah, this is a Rainmaker site, so I don't <laughs> know of a cash button, but I know that you know since this hosting has cash stuff going on, so maybe that's it. Awesome. So we uh, we can continue that. Uh, we'll keep that up. Um, designbizcrashcourse.com slash Matt Report. Keep that up for a little uh, while longer, uh, probably maybe to the end of the day, perhaps, just to make sure we can uh, get this stuff uh, working 100%. So now we're going to dive into some of the questions. If you have questions, you drop them into the Q&A. Let me pull that Q&A up um, of YouTube. Drop that right into the right into there. Uh, and I'm also taking questions on Twitter. Hashtag Matt Report. I'm scrolling through the questions. Scrolling through the questions. Let's take one. Uh, let's take the first one from the Google Hangout. Justin, I have no idea how to say your last name. <laughs> I think it's Mackenzie Walks. Justin Mackenzie Walks. Who owns the code per your contract? So, Shay, you deliver a project. Who owns the code? That is an interesting question. It's something that's been highly debated. Um, because I, my theme is, or all my themes are Genesis Child themes, I kind of um, just say that it's GPL. It's, you know, no one really owns it. <laughs> it can be used and reused. Um, however, it would be kind of shady if someone did reuse it exactly as it is. <laughs> sure. sure. But yeah, but no, in a client setting, I hand over everything to the client and I don't claim ownership over it at all. Okay. Um, what about any, do you ever do any sort of just custom implementations where you do any kind of custom functionality within the theme? Yeah, absolutely. Um, there, we've done a few different things. Um, one thing that I've been doing more of is creating communities um, on websites, and it's you know it used to be I think that you had to have like BuddyPress or something like that to create a community, but we've been able to do it within the theme um, without using BuddyPress and just um, do like some intricate forms, custom post types, those kinds of things. So it's been interesting to work that out. But those are the kinds of things that I do have to bring a developer on most of the time to help me handle. Awesome. Yeah, I know for us, uh, it's very few and far between. We're on the same thing. We're using the WordPress platform. We'll outline any of the um, any of the plugins that we're using for any kind of special functionality, be it uh, like like you said, BuddyPress, BBPress, Gravity Forms, Ninja Forms, WooCommerce, uh, any of those major sort of platform plugins. Uh, you know, we will also outline that. We've had a few clients that we did some real heavy custom work. Um, there's a, uh, we did a, I had a client that we did like a, they have a search engine, they're a startup in Boston and they have a, like a medical search engine and they use WordPress to publish to that and we sort of sit in the middle with some Tomcat code. Um, we, you know, we had to specifically outline to say that they own the code that they were giving to us, that we were going to implement, blah, 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 blah. So in real technical areas like that, we have real specific stuff. Um, aside from that, we fall in the same, same ballpark, we just hand it over to them. Say, here's everything that's GPL. Other than yeah. that, have fun. <laughs> <laughs> have fun. Uh, let's take another question. What inspires your designs? How do you transform that into a theme product? Is that for you or for me? That's for you. Oh. All of these questions uh, are for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I only have one theme product. Um, so I think what inspires me the most is um, minimalism, honestly. Um, when things are really minimalistic and clean and cleared of all kinds of clutter and distractions, that, that inspires me. And so 
um, that's with Foodie Pro. I wanted to create something that was minimalist um, because in the, in the like food theme, I guess kind of um, realm when I created Foodie in the beginning, there wasn't anything like that. Um, it was very like you know cupcake shop cutesy pictures kind of thing. So, you know, merging the, I like to merge two things that don't seem like they would go together and put them together. And then that to me is, is uh, I guess, the most inspirational. But you're also getting like direct feedback from people too, right? Because you're building, the, you're customizing these and you're using like real, I'll call data in this example. And for this example, like people are saying, this is what I want. Um, and that's sort of finding its way back into the product eventually, right? Are you talking about, okay, so I think of a theme product as like a pre-made theme. Yep. I don't think of my client work as a product, but if you're talking about that, oh, absolutely. We have a huge like branding process that we go through um, where there's all these questions that they need to complete, and I get my clients to get really um, reflective about, you know, what they want their design to accomplish online and it's very similar to what you did um, last week with Angie Meeker um, with the school process or is it called core now? It's called core, yep. Core, yep. And um, so having something like that, th that's where we pull the inspiration from for a client project, absolutely. Nice, very nice, yeah. Uh, for those who are, are new to the Matt Report podcast, right now I have a whole series going on uh, about web redesign. Uh, we started off with a uh, rather lengthy uh, two and a half hour discovery process. You know, don't worry, you don't have to download the whole thing on iTunes. Uh, the full two and a half hours is on my YouTube channel, but there's a condensed version uh, in the iTunes feed that you can download, and that's uh, the core process, which used to be called the schools, put on by Jose Cavalier. Um, he now works at an agency in LA called Blind uh, with Chris Doe. It's an amazing process, um, and we use that to sort of um, set up our projects. Uh, we, <clears throat> I just recently released setting a budget for your, for your um, project. So, um, if you are a client looking to build a website, how do you do this? Like how, like how do we approach somebody like Shay and say, I've got five thousand bucks, ten thousand uh, bucks for this project. What can you do with it? Um, that kind of thing. Or flip side, if you are uh, one of us, what what are the expectations that the that the client expects for that kind of price point? And that's. Um, that was just released, and I've got another one about managing the five thousand, the five thousand dollar project to the fifty thousand dollar project. That'll be really fun. Um, Jackie says kudos for your pricing. It's worth it. Pricing for your theme. So good Thank job. Thank you, Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how do you approach supporting your theme? Um, technically, you know, emotionally, <laughs> I yeah. will not do that for you for one hundred and twenty bucks. <laughs> Right. Uh, how could you ever ask me that? Uh, well, it's actually surprising to find out what people expect when they buy a theme, and then they'll email you and say, "Hey, can you customize this for me for free?" And, and you know, that's not going to happen. Um, so, but we do want to provide excellent support, you know, to our to our clients or customers. And um, so, I started out doing it completely myself, and realized quickly that that is not my strong suit and that's not what I want to do. <laughs> so I hired a team. I have two part-time people who that's what they do is they handle support for me. And so they only pull me in when, when there's a question that they can't answer or something that I need to know about. But that also really helps when we need to make updates to the theme and stuff because I can just ask them, what are you getting a lot of questions about? What do we need to add to the theme? You know, what, what do we need to change? And it helps to have like a team of people who are answering all of these questions and dealing with all the customers and everything that they have going on and what kind of things do they want customized and all of that kind of stuff. So it helps to really have that atmosphere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that's awesome. It's awesome that you're able to find uh, you know, two individuals to help support that. Um, we get the same we get the same thing with our themes. It's funny because I think it was either it was either this morning or yesterday I saw a request come through and it was like, you know, and you know this because we sell at an international market, so I think this person was um, outside of the U.S. and I don't think English was their native tongue, but they just, you know, it was just like two lines like, using your theme, <laughs> how do I take, how do I take form submissions from Gravity Forms and build a directory with your theme? Thanks. And it's just like, well, yeah. unfortunately, we're just way too far apart. Um, I, though I do have a product that 
we, I could offer you, uh, but <laughs> it's just certainly not going to be part of like um, you know doing that. And, and I think that same person had another like sort of way outlandish request too. And you know, again, it's not it's not their fault. They sort of see us do screencasts and they see the magic happen on like a web page or a blog post, and they're like, well, this must be that easy, you know. Um, unfortunately, some of those deeper things get a little bit more technical. Right. Do your kids understand much about the business that you run? Are your kids involved in your business in any way? <laughs> well, my kids are very little. I have a six-year-old, a four-year-old, and an almost two-year-old. So all they know is mommy works at the computer. And sometimes it's Starbucks. So that's about all they know. And um, But, you know, I have high hopes for them. I'm hoping that they will learn how to code and they will be my little development team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You heard it here. <laughs> I'm not going no, not to get into that. This is a, this is a family show. <laughs> Even though I dropped an F-bomb before. Uh, Shay, do you work with a legal professional, or do you work with any legal professional help, uh, or did you originally create your contract? I um, pieced together my contract uh, myself, but I do recommend working with a, an attorney if you want your contract to be legally binding. For me, it's not that important that my contract is legally binding, because for me, it's more about expectations. But I definitely... If you feel like you're ever going to have to actually use your contract, see an attorney and get them to draw you one up, look it over, and and all of that. <laughs> yes, disclaimer at the bottom: we are not uh, <laughs> we are not legal yeah, professionals. Exactly. <laughs> uh, I am not for sure. Um, okay, another question: uh, What was your minimal viable product for Foodie uh, and Foodie Pro? Did it start somewhere else and it sort of grew into to what it is today, uh, or? Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely grown because um, the original Foodie was, it didn't have as much uh, functionality as Foodie Pro does. And so it didn't have all these customization options and we've got a cool widget in there now that we didn't have before. And so I guess the original Foodie was my minimal viable product, but it started out as my starter theme that I used for my client projects because I because when you work with a niche market, a lot of the clients are going to want a lot of the same things and then you can just style it differently for each client. So that's that was my starter theme, and um, then I basically took it and kind of packaged it up so that anyone can use it. Yeah, yeah, it's it's awesome stuff. <clears throat> it's very much how um, we launched our our themes and and our plugin. It's very much based off of the you know the interacting with clients um, on our on our services side of the house and just saying like, you know, what kind of theme do they want? What kind of layout do they want? What kind of functions do they want? Um, and then sort of just gave it a little bit of a product twist of our own and, and kind of just got it out the door. And uh, so far it's it's been thumbs up with that approach. Yeah, and co Conductor is really cool because you're really solving a lot of the issues that we even see in our support questions. You know, it, you really solve a lot of problems that either designers or developers or even like DIY people are seeing in their, you know, when they're trying to put things together. So it's it's really neat how you've done that. Yeah, it's something that, you know, in, in the world, again, I didn't want to make this show about that, but uh, <laughs> in the world of, um, you know, fancy uh, page builders, and a lot of them serve great, great purposes. There's a lot of great products out there, some not so great, but um, the idea here is, hey, you're an agency, and you've got this specific problem, and you want to solve it in a very efficient way, uh, not only is it fast and efficient, uh, you can trust our code and you can also just at the end of the day make more margin, right? You can move from project to project a whole heck of a lot faster um, and you can do some more complex things that otherwise might take four or five hours to to code. You can just wrap it up in one plugin and move move from there. Uh, yeah. And that's sort of the approach we did. And, and again, and I know there's a lot of advice out there where people are like, well, don't scratch your own itch, research the market, which I totally agree on. But... At the end of the day, when you're doing client services, it's very hard to end the day and be like, time to do market research on this product that I haven't built yet, right? And now I have to think about what that product is and find that market. I totally get it. I totally understand how it makes a great business. But again, like I said before, when you're in agency work and you're in product work, you know, when you're building stuff for clients, like you, you don't get any closer to the ground than that because they're that saying That is market like, research. Right. <laughs> Here are my here are my pain points. Fix it for me. Um, you know, so at the end of the day, it's it's an easy way to recycle the time, I guess, right? Yeah. You're building stuff for clients. You're learning what they want, 
and then you kind of sort of uh, repurpose that into a product. And that's the only way I know how to do it. Plenty of other people uh, can get some good information from that or uh, doing it the other way too. Another question on Google Plus from Christy Gardner. Does that ring a bell? Brian Gardner. <laughs> <laughs> you related? Um, <laughs> um, let's see. I do have a question that she may address. Na, na, na. How do you manage client expectations when it comes to client tardiness? Uh, I've been struggling to keep, uh, struggling with keeping some clients on schedule uh, despite my welcome package and being very forthright about our process together. Uh, this is pushing back, this is pushing back new clients and delaying other projects that I, and I'd love some insight onto this, uh, into this. Thanks. Yeah, um, this is something that now I have a lot more flexibility that if a client doesn't get back to me, I can go, oh, that's okay. We can wait a couple of weeks, you know, just because my schedule is so spread out. But when I was first starting out, I was booked, like solid. And so if a client didn't get back to me in time, that threw off everybody else. And those other clients aren't going to be happy about it, you know. So I had to get kind of cutthroat. And I actually put in my contract that if I didn't hear back from you in 15 days, you surrender everything that you've paid me already and that project is ended. <laughs> and I had to do that to a couple of clients. But I think it kind of... Um, that kind of went away over time. And, um, you know, when they came back and they're like, oh, I'm so sorry, I had to say, okay, well, if you'd like to start a new project, it's going to be this much of a price difference. Uh, it, because I, And you have to go back in the queue. So um, you, with those kinds of situations, you kind of have to get cutthroat and make sure you have it in your contract ahead of time so that when they're reading through it, they're going, okay, well, I don't want to lose all of the money I've paid you, so I'm going to make sure I get back in touch. Here, here's a great lesson, everybody. Shay comes on the show. This very nice woman. She says she's very shy. She I says know. she would never bring anybody to court. And then she drops on the. Then she drops on cutthroat and surrender everything to me within 15 days. And we're like, oh, where the hell did she come from? Um, yeah, I mean that just blew my answer out of the water. <laughs> well, what were you gonna say? You're just probably better. <laughs> well, if Christy's watching and if Christy was watching before, uh, we sort of talked about you know if you're finding the right if you're finding the customer that fits with you, the finding the customer that jives with you, um, the thing I said, uh, the, the give and take of the agency life of, of this kind of business is very much, look man or gal, we're building this project for you because you want to achieve this, right? We're not just building a project. Like, you're not calling us up saying, I got a leaky faucet. How much can you, how much can you repair it for, right? You're coming to us because you say, I need to make X amount of revenue with my website or I have a brick and mortar store and I need to sell stuff online or you're a publisher and you need to streamline teams of people contributing content there's this goal right sure there's mar there's brochureware sites but the idea is most of our stuff is there's a goal uh, from the onset of the project and that's the goal that we're going after so if you are not delivering content and your goal is a million dollars in revenue a year I'm gonna knock on the door and say Give me your content. How are we ever going to achieve this million dollars a year in revenue that you're after, right? Because I very much see ourselves as an extension to the companies that we work for. I'm sure we're consultants um, <clears throat> and they are outsourcing to us or whatever because they don't want to bring it in internally. But the idea is I don't just buy into doing the work. I buy into because these are the goals you want to hit. You're hiring me to help you achieve these goals. <laughs> you know, we are the professionals here and we are going to help you do this. Um, so I'm very much like, give me your content. Or, you know, you're still gonna have to pay us anyway. <laughs> uh, sure, right. there's 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 con there's stuff in the in the contract too, um, so it's very much like what you're doing. But I like that um, that sort of personable level, right? And I know it sounds a little weird. I just like having that conversation because it puts us back into control. Yeah, no, that that's much better. Okay, so do Matt's solution first, and then if that <laughs> doesn't work, then you cut the throat. Yeah. <laughs> right, and then you come out with the fangs that nobody <laughs> <even> had. Um, <laughs> I'm going to wrap up with just a couple more questions. If you have them, uh, again, drop them in the Q&A, hashtag Matt Report. One last question from Justin, the same Justin from before. How do you manage code versioning and legacy compatibility as the theme evolves? Because with each project, you fix and add something, so on and so forth. Uh, here is where the fact comes in that I'm not a developer. <laughs> and it's 
so I probably don't do it the way it should be done. Um, I honestly just have each version saved as a separate file on my computer, and that's how I handle it. So don't follow my example and <laughs> talk to a developer, you know, who does that the right way. Because I'm sure there's a million different right ways other than that. <laughs> yeah, for <clears throat> I mean, for us, uh, our public-facing stuff is hosted on GitHub. Our private stuff is on Bitbucket. Um, we share that with the team. And that's how we do the versioning. Try to keep all of our stuff. Uh, so <clears throat> we do the freemium model with our themes. Uh, we have our seven or eight themes in WordPress.org, uh, and then the other, and then the premium themes on SlocumThemes.com. And we just pretty much try, try to stay parallel with what WordPress wants. So if there's whatever version, it's two versions back, I believe, of backwards compatibility. Um, so we stay very much in line uh, with what WordPress wants. Um, you know, any kind of coding you know, standard or practice or best practice, I guess. Uh, everything that we have to, everything that, all the themes that we have have been approved by WordPress.org's you know, uh, theme review process. Um, so we have, you know, we, we say we have that going for us. .org is, is approving us, then it's safe to say that our themes will be compatible with I mean, whatever WordPress says it's compatible. I mean, that's a, a short, short, sort of a, a stretch of, of imagination, but... Uh, that's how we sort of stay on par um, with keeping uh, WordPress safe, I guess. Um, I'm sure there's some, compl not complications, but I'm sure that StudioPress and Genesis has a different approach to supporting their framework, I'd imagine. I've never really looked into creating themes for them, so I don't know. Um, they just kind of have it on their website. Yep. Like, yeah. It's a great answer. I'll get back to you on that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, just a comment, tons of insight from Shaybox and Matt Medeiros, uh on the Design Biz Crash Course webinar. Um, so thanks for that. Hey, look, I, I think I'm done. I think we're good. An hour and a half is pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate this opportunity, Matt, to talk to people and take questions and share. Right. <laughs> so the course goes live tomorrow officially. You can get in on it today. for. It's going to go live for $2.99. You can get it today for $2.49. Uh, you can use the URL designbizcrashcourse.com slash matreport. We are going to fix the credit card processing thing, hopefully. Yes, yes. as soon as we get off of here, I'm going to figure it out because, <laughs> yeah, that's a little crazy. So, so but, please stay uh, connected yeah. to that. We'll probably leave that up and running for the rest of the day if you've watched that just to give folks a, a chance to uh, to grab that discount uh, because I had to talk her off of the ledge to get her to 299 Right, because she was going <laughs> to launch right. at 249, but we are going to launch. I say we. She is going to launch at 299, um, because it's well worth it. Um, you can save 20% on Conductor Plugin, conductorplugin.com, Matt Report 20 at checkout. Uh, not on the Blogger package. It's already cheap enough. It's 49 bucks. Come on, people. Uh, but for the 99, 199, and agency pack or developer package, you can save 20%. Um, and that's some great stuff, especially if you're developing Genesis sites or you're new to WordPress. It's sort of a great way uh, to be a starter uh, development package for you. Check that out. All right, Shay, where can folks find you on the web to say thanks? Uh, I am at on Facebook a whole lot more than I'm on Twitter, but on Twitter you can find me at, at Shaybox. And, of course, Shaybox.com. It's awesome stuff. Thanks for joining. Everybody uh, who's new to the show today, thanks for attending. Uh, it's MattReport.com. It's a WordPress digital business podcast, so I talk to everybody and any, any, anyone and everybody who's using WordPress as the foundation uh, of their business, be it they don't even touch WordPress code. They just use WordPress to run their site, and they give us some insight to how they run their business. Or we talk to designers and developers uh, that have products like Shea, and we interview them to figure out how they do it so we can apply it to our own business, MattReport.com slash subscribe, uh, and Matt Report in iTunes. I'd love a five-star review. If you enjoy the show, let me know. Uh, until next time, everybody, thanks for joining, and we'll see you, uh, see you on the Internet.